you're looking through camera specifications, trying to find the best camera. And one of those cameras has a much wider extended ISO range than the alternate. So you zero in on that camera. But is extended ISO or expanded ISO really that important? Do you know what it does? You may want to reconsider after this video. Here's a common scenario. You're making a landscape photo and go to your camera's lowest extended ISO because the internet says that you always need to use the lowest ISO possible to get a clean image to avoid noise. Looking at my Fujifilm X-T5, it has a native or normal ISO range of 125 to 12,800, but an extended range of 64 to 51,200. So instead of using the native low limit of 125, I use the extended low limit of 64 to get a cleaner image. For one, that's asinine. I'm not shy about sharing my opinions on this. If you're spending your energy worried about the noise levels of ISO 125 versus ISO 64, frankly, your energy could be better spent elsewhere. Put your efforts into creating photos that speak to people, and they're not gonna care if that photo was captured at ISO 64 or 6,400. That's just my philosophical reason to care less about the low extended ISO. But there's a practical reason to not get too excited about it. So let's now go back to my landscape. I'm at my low extended limit of 64 in manual exposure, and I adjust my shutter speed so I just barely avoid clipping the highlights, those snowy areas. I want to show texture in that snow. So I increase my shutter speed until that highlight clipping warning just disappears. It's still sunlit snow, so it should be at the far right side of that histogram, but I don't want it pure white. I capture the photo, thinking I nailed it, but look, those areas are actually pure white, overexposed. That texture is gone. Why is that? That's because extended ISO ranges actually capture your photo at your native ISO limits. The light that the sensor captures and then sends to the processor is actually captured at ISO 125 since that's the native limit. The software within the camera then pulls down that exposure to what that photo would have looked like had it been captured at ISO 64. If my aperture and shutter speed combo just barely avoided highlight clipping at ISO 64, but the processor is actually getting an ISO 125 image, it's getting an overexposed image. You're not getting that detail back. Let's compare it now to the same scene using the lowest native limit, ISO 125. Again, just barely avoiding clipping in the snowy areas, at first glance, these two images appear to be exposed the same, but with a different shutter speed and ISO. But look at those snowy areas. The photo created at the native limit shows texture in those snowy areas, while the photo created at the extended limit lost all of that texture. The same thing is happening at the high extended ISO limits. Here I'm at the high extended limit of 51,200 for the X-T5, and I set my exposure and aperture for ISO 51,200. But the camera is actually capturing that at the native limit of ISO 12,800, two stops underexposed, and sending an image that is two stops underexposed to the camera software. Then that camera software is pushing the exposure up two stops. The result is, of course, an increase in noise and a loss of color. There are certainly times where you may want to use the extended ISO ranges. I don't want you to think that you should never use it after what I've said here. If you're a JPEG photographer, getting those images straight out of the camera, which is a fun and fulfilling thing to do, the extended ISO ranges particularly the low settings, do have some utility. 
They allow you to slow down your shutter speed a little bit more to show some more movement or open up that aperture to isolate your subject some more, especially in bright light. You just have to be aware of the highlights. If you're playing right on the edge of clipping, remember that the exposure sent to the processor will actually be overexposed. So keep that in mind when you're recording the JPEGs, but that low extended limit is nice to push your aperture or your shutter speed a little bit more. The high extended ISR ranges though, you're gonna have a lot of noise and that will be noticeable, but if the cost of getting a fast enough shutter speed for sharpness is worth it, then go for it. For raw only photographers, however, I still think you'd be better off shooting within the native ISO. Overexpose that raw file if you need to at the low native limit for a slower shutter speed or wider aperture, being careful not to clip the highlights of that raw file, and then you have more control to bring that exposure back down in your raw processor of choice over what the camera would do. And then underexpose at the high native limit if you need that fast shutter speed and then just push it up in your raw processor. You just have more control doing it yourself that way. Now I know this is a controversial topic. Feel free to get in on the discussion in the comments below. Subscribe for more tips like this every week, and I'll see you in the next video.